Nice. history that it went into it. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and thank you so much, Dr. Burgess, for the customary 30 minutes to discuss this bill. Mr. Speaker, I rise to oppose today's rule. Eight legislative days, let's count them, eight legislative days left to fund the government. And under Republican leadership, what have we done? We've passed one just one of the 12 appropriations bills necessary. One of 12. We were supposed to take up the rule for the defense appropriations bill yesterday. But last night, last evening, in a rushed meeting, we changed the rule to limit it to this single bill. The only thing we have to show for an entire week in session is a bill that attacks states' rights and California's ability to decide for its own what regulations it wants under the Clean Air Act as it is allowed to do under existing law and has been allowed to do for decades. You know what? When Democrats were in the majority in the previous Congress, we didn't hear what we're hearing from Republicans. We did not hear Democrats saying, we're gonna shut it down. No, Democrats have always looked for solutions. We have not been calling to shut it down. We have always worked to work it out. Over and over again, not just this week, but over the summer, we have heard extreme Magba Republicans voice their goal of a forced government shutdown. We need to remember that the times that we have faced a shutdown and suffered through a shutdown, we, it has been when Republican speakers were in charge. Remember 1995, 96? 2013? 2018, we needed to have Speaker Pelosi take charge so we could open our government back up. In the Rules Committee, we heard Republicans say, let's shut it down. Let's make clear that that it that is sometimes referred to as it was, something that is not beneficial. That it are the people who make sure our food is safe. The it they want to shut down is the program that makes sure that our women, infant, and children, our seniors and veterans have enough food on their table. The it are the people who serve and protect our country and our services. The it are the people who maintain our beautiful national parks and allow us to see America's wonders. Americas don't, Americans don't want us to head to a goal of we are shutting it down. Why don't we work it out? As Ranking Member McGovern noted yesterday, the last time our government shut down, it was the longest in history due to inaction by then President Trump and Republican majorities in the House and Senate. It cost Americans $11 billion, $3 billion permanently, and caused sizable suffering for our constituents. We are talking about people having to take out loans all through our country. I have been visited over and over again. The auto dealers came to my chambers yesterday and talked about the repercussions that a shutdown has on their business. People are gonna have a hard time paying their mortgage, putting food on the table. But it didn't have to be this way. The White House Democrats and Republicans negotiated a bipartisan agreement in the Fiscal Responsibility Act in June. That set up the pathway to how were we going to fund the government with cuts, making sure that we kept government funding level. Now a mere three months later, they are backing out on their commitment. Extreme Republicans are blowing up our commitment to the American people. My rural district, it'll suffer. It'll suffer tremendously, as will all rural districts across its country. And we need to remember, rural America is the backbone of this country, and they are sacrificing it. A shutdown could delay veterans and Social Security payments.
With eight legislative days to avoid a government shutdown, we have a bill totally unrelated to funding the government. H.R. 1435, Preserving Choice and Vehicle Purchases Act, is an attack on efforts to reduce pollution and climate change. I've noticed that the Republicans have a habit of naming their bills to do the opposite of what the bill actually does. This legislation will remove the choice that Californians have exercised as they elect their own government and as they choose to look to how do they want to make sure they exercise their right to adopt clean air standards. For decades, the Clean Air Act has reduced harmful air pollutants, leading to fewer instances of respiratory diseases, cardiovascular problems, and other health issues. That's in part to the law's flexibility. It allows flexibility to allow choice for California and other states to adopt strict standards. H.R. 1435 threatens our efforts to lessen air pollution and reduce greenhouse gas emissions and fight climate change. It also disrupts the U.S. vehicle market and could harm our global competitiveness in the electric vehicle market. I will say it again, however, at a time when we have a duty to fund the government, the Republican majority is instead picking on states' rights, picking on states that want to clean up their air and fight climate change. I hope my colleagues, I urge my colleagues to change course and oppose this rule. I reserve. The gentlewoman reserves. The gentleman from Texas is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. This time